Hey, what's up, everybody? Just recapping a day on the lake yesterday. I was out at Lake of the Ozarks doing some fishing for fun and trying some new techniques and some new strategies, getting ready for the next Bass and Bob Fitz Fishing Tournament coming up here in a couple weeks. And I can tell you, yesterday was damn cold, <laughs> but still had an okay day on the water. Wanted to try and find some new areas there in the glaze where I could spend a little bit of time trying to expand that, that small zone I've got that I have confidence in. And I tell you, I have tried and tried and tried for years to try and find more areas, more pockets where I can catch groups of fish in that arm of the lake. And I'm still struggling a little bit. I get one or two here, one or two there. And uh, so I keep trying to find new patterns, new strategies within that two to three mile range there in the glaze arm, not too far from PB2 where I can run in my jet boat. Obviously, I'm not gonna make a big long run up and down the lake from, you know, the damned, uh, the Osage River arm in that little jet boat. That's not going to happen. Areas where I've been successful in the past has been within areas of a lake. For example, on Grand Lake, when I won that tournament, I found an area about a two mile stretch up the Elk River where I did good. Uh, the tournament I won on Stockton here last May was within about a one mile area of the take out there in the backs of the creeks where I could run that pattern in a certain area and not have to make big long runs. And so as I look back over my tournament career, areas where I've done well in is areas where I can find groups of fish in a concentrated section of the lake, where I don't have to run all over the place a certain pattern where it's black rock on the back of a channel swing bank and a large creek, and I run 20 of those throughout the lake. I can't do that right now in the current boat I got. So I'm looking for specific areas within the lake where I can be efficient and catch a limit of fish or and hopefully cull a few as well. But anyway, yesterday was cold, yesterday was windy, but I got three takeaways uh, that I wanna share with everybody here. Number one, the jerkbait crappie are starting to bite. <laughs> so um, the plan was to fish the whopper plopper uh, and just cover a bunch of water around there and try and find which parts of the creeks they were in, if they were on black rock or on steep banks or flatter banks or what have you. But that north wind was blowing so hard that it just didn't work out very good at all. I had two really good blow ups on it. Uh, didn't catch either one. Um, and there wasn't much consistency to that. Oh, but uh, the water temperatures on Lake of the Ozarks were dropping down from about 52, 53, where I started kind of in the fronts of the creeks. And by the time you got all the way to the back end, it was down to 49. So this cold snap we got is starting to cool the water down. What, however, that did do, I think, is it turned on the jerkbait bite just a little bit. So before I leave the crappie topic here, I caught four <laughs> really nice crappie just on a Mega Bass 110 jerkbait. Uh, and I'm not sure what color this is. It's got a blue purple back with kind of that bright chartreuse belly. It was pretty dark yesterday and the water was somewhat clear but not super bright. So I wanted something a little bit, uh, a little bit louder for the fish to see. But I ended up catching four crappie on this. I threw the first one back like a dummy thinking it was a fluke. Uh, they ended up catching three more, so I, I kept them for a while, but I only caught three, so I ended up throwing them back at the end of the day. But this was fun, uh, and so I'll know better next time. If you start getting some bites on jerk bait on crappie, you might <laughs> keep them in your boat. You might be able to catch more than just one. But that was a good crappie pattern that I was starting to pick up on Lake of the Ozarks um, on that. So that's one key takeaway, the jerk bait crappie are biting. One of the other things I wanted to try is, is a new bait by Berkeley. And I'm not sponsored by them or anybody, frankly, but um, what I was throwing um, is this Berkeley Dime 4. And it's a two inch bait, dives four to six feet. And I tried this red craw pattern and this kind of clear opaque shad pattern. And the reason I wanted to try these is, this is my sneaky favorite fall crankbait of all time, frankly. It's a little Norman's crappie crankbait. Um, and I've caught a lot, a lot of fish on this. A lot of little ones, but I've caught some good ones on it too. And there's something about the wobble on this that the fish really seem to like, especially in the fall. It's a silent bait. It doesn't have a lot of uh, a noise to it, but it's got a really nice wobble to it that the fish seem to like. The challenge with this is that they're so light. It's about an eighth of an ounce. And so it's really hard to throw on a bait cast. Um, for the most part, I gotta throw it on a spinning rod. And when the wind picks up and they're on the, the dock corners, you really got to struggle to make accurate casts with that. So what I wanted to find was a bait with a little bit more weight to it. And these Berkeley baits, 
have got a little weight on the front there and they've got that, like the jerk baits, they've got that ball and weight on the back that helps it make it easier to cast. Um, so I'm trying to find an imitator of this and this is fairly close. And so I picked up a few of these to try out. Plus they get down just a little bit deeper. It's not a square bill, but it bounces through the cover pretty good actually. Um, and so for the most part, these do cast better on bait casting and I caught um, a few fish on them. Actually it was on this one more than the other one. But as I suspected, and what I don't like about these is they got these probably size number six these number six short shanked hooks on there and uh, I do not like them. I have zero confidence in them at all. So just a lesson learned. I lost more fish on this than I put in the boat. And I was throwing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon on a medium action bait cast with quite a bit of flex in it. And I either need to switch to larger hooks, number fours probably, which, is I'm, gonna, which I'm probably going to do. And I'm even thinking about going to uh, a monofilament um, or like a trilene sensation line. It's got a little bit more stretch to it. But for some reason, um, I just seen a lot. I lost a bunch of fish on this yesterday, and I wasn't real happy about that. But the goal is is trying to find something like this that I can cast on a bait cast, and I'm still still searching for that option here. Um, but either way, I throw this on a spinning rod, and it's it's one of my favorite fall baits, especially around the docks. So takeaway number two, these Berkeley Dimes, pretty good bait. I got, had some action on there yet, but definitely need to change out the hooks up size to number fours. Um, they may tangle up in each other more when you do that, but I'd, I'll take that over losing good fish on a regular basis on these. I really like the paint schemes. It's a durable bait. They're reasonably priced, but they're still, I don't know, nine or 10 bucks it seems like. So they're not cheap either, especially by the time you upgrade the hooks. So anyway, I wanted to try out these Berkeley Dimes, the number fours, mixed reviews on them. Um, I'll keep working on those and keep getting them another honest review, but that's something I wanted to try before the water gets too cold and the, and the crankbait bite kind of dies off. Um, and the last takeaway, the third takeaway is it's about time for that cold water transition on Lake of the Ozarks where us as anglers, we've got to get ready for the cold weather and like the fish seem to be switching more from that that top water fall bite almost to a winter bite um, and it may you know it may transition back to fall if it warms up again but I was not quite prepared for that cold north wind yesterday as I should have been so um, one of the things I forgot and I would recommend for cold weather bass in the third takeaway is hand warmers and you got these kind here the traditional kind but my wife got these for me for Christmas last year um, and they're rechargeable hand warmers you can put in your pockets I got these and I wished I had them because my hands were freezing yesterday. I was getting real stiff and hard to grip on anything. Um, but it's time to get ready for that cold water um, fishing on Lake of the Ozarks and wintertime fishing here in central Missouri. So kind of preparing for that. Just a reminder for cold weather fishing, it can be dangerous out there. So just make sure somebody knows where you're at. Be careful on the boat. Uh, it can get a little slippery, get a little stiff, a little cold. So make sure you got somebody with you. You know somebody knows where you're at in case something were to happen. Typically, I also like to bring some hot meals, something hot and a little thermos that you can bring that'll warm you up. Um, obviously, the stocking cap, the gloves, that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing that I ordered, I've been kicking it around and I finally pulled the trigger on it last night. Amazon had their uh, Cyber Monday deals is these electronic heated vests. And so I ordered one of those. It was on a, a Cyber Monday deal through Amazon. So I'm excited to try that. Help keep your core a little bit warmer. Uh, it's got heating pads on the back, on the neck, on the front. Uh, it's rechargeable. You can put it on low. It'll supposed to go to 10 hours. So I got me one of those heated vests on order. I'm going to try that as well and see if that doesn't help. Uh, just kind of help stay warmer when you're on the water all day and it's cold and that, that northwest wind is blowing. So anyway, um, Hope you like the format. Give me some comments, some feedback in the comments section. Um, thoughts on, help me find something like this that's a little bit heavier, that's this small. This small crappie crankbait really looks good like uh, the Threadfin Shad do this time of year, where they're just little bitty one or two inches there, and that's what this bait imitates so well. This is a decent substitute, but I still have some reservations. By the time I change the hooks out, hopefully that'll make the hookup ratio a little bit better. But Anyway, getting ready for the next Bass and Bob Fitz fishing event, uh, December 
14th, I think it is. Come back for Sam's graduation on Friday and then fish that tournament uh, on Saturday. So I'll probably do a little pre-fishing this weekend um, while I get a chance out there and I'll share that footage as well. Hey, let me know if you like the format. Give me some feedback in the comments and thanks for watching everybody.